This is the 10th video in my tutorial series where I'm attempting to animate this skeleton model which was uh, exported from the software MakeHuman. Um, in the last video I left off assigning vertex groups to regions of the model that didn't require any interaction of weights and really didn't need much for um, mesh deformation and I said that I'd work on the spinal column and getting some mesh deformation in place there in order to get this guy working and that I'd come back in this video with some of that done and that's exactly what I've done so let's go to a side view and have a look at what I've got and my deformation is by no means perfect. I'm still pretty new at this software. But I am getting some. And it's not too terribly bad. And I'll just demonstrate a little bit as I can. Rotate some of this area that needs deformation. And we'll have a bit of a look and I've gotten a bend going across this spine which is okay considering that we really only have one two three and the head bone four bones to work with here getting the spine to bend is not all that easy and um, there's a lot of trial and error in it um, and well a lot of practice I'm sure it comes easy to some folks and it's really obvious and stuff but I don't think that it's that way for everybody and I personally don't find it that way myself and I've been wrestling with this for a little while to figure that out so I'm gonna show what I did with the weights and just give an idea for the vertex groups first let's go into object mode and then select the skeleton and go into weight paint mode and try to have a look at some of these groups Oh, I think I'll use the organizer over here. It's easier to find things along this side. So let's start with the head and I'll turn that off so we can see better. So we'll look at the back side of this head and on the head I used a reduced weight um, somewhere around five or four if I recall correctly and graduated down into the neck where if I wanted a rigid control of the head where it didn't affect the neck then I wouldn't place any weights into the neck and that's not what I wanted I wanted to be able to move the head and have the spine or column move a bit as well to give it a little bit of a natural look to it and the next would be the neck so let's look at that and again the same thing with the neck but unlike the head which had a starting point is a start in this chain the neck its heaviest weight is centered and I tried to center it in the area where I wanted it to bend the most and perhaps that area could use a little bit of tweaking and then from there I graduated the weights towards the head and I started with a weight of around 6 or 5 and graduated to a weight of 0 0.05 oh I should say 0.5 to 0 0.05 and the same in the downward graduation of 0.5 to 0 0.05 so this will be the area that it moves the most and this will be the area that it moves the least and next up would be the spine the spine I used some heavier weights on and really there's a lot of hit and miss and trial and error for me on this but again it's the same thing I used a heavier weight in the area where I wanted it to bend more and graduated that weight up into an area of 0 0.05 and also going downwards I graduated it again to a weight of 0 
And the last one in this chain is the pelvis. Which again is a starting point of this chain of bones. So I had to lower weight on the pelvis and graduated it upwards to around two thirds of the way into the spine. And it's this graduation of weights that gives the interaction between this bone and this bone. This bone is staying still and has holds so much sway over the action of, of the spine and this area of the ribs. And the spine, spinal column also holds its degree of sway. Um, just like in the groups of the rigging where we have a hierarchy, weights also assume a hierarchy over the mesh and that's more or less how it works and by graduating the weight of the bone into the region of the spine I create an interaction that allows it to bend and um, how I did this was in edit mode and I'll find the spine here and select it at first I started with the entire region that I wanted to attach weights to in the spine and I attached a full weight of I believe 0.7 or in that area and then I systematically box selected starting from the area that I wanted to make bend more and that I wanted to hold that higher weight of 0.7 or 0.6 and then I gradually reduced the weight assigned it with the reduced weight and box selected and widen the area some more. Reduce the weight again, assigned it, and widen the area some more. And this is how I created the graduation in my weights. I didn't use any weight painting whatsoever. Um, well, it would be very worthwhile to note that I did this in wireframe so that I was selecting right through the model. And as I made my way through, I would reduce the weight by one step. And on my, as I'm doing it, I tried to consider the fact that coming near the ends of the spinal um, vertex group, I wanted to be land at a weight of around 0 0.05, so that there would be very little motion and very little interaction from it when I bend the spine. And by doing that. When I do bend the spine, it doesn't become disembodied and there's very little motion in this area and the bend is centered more or less in the area of the highest weight and it gives me the best deformation that I could come up with and this is something that's going to take some trial and error and some practice. And like I said, I'm sure that some people this comes perfectly natural to and really isn't that difficult. But for me, it's a bit of a struggle and I could probably use tweaking my guy a bit. So from here, I'm going to start working on an animation and I'm not really sure if I'm going to do any videos for that. I'll have to wait and see as that progresses because I have very little experience with animating, um, even less with animating than deforming meshes. So I'm going to have to see if I can manage any tutorial on that that's worthwhile to, to anybody. And I'm going to make an animation though and make it for my prologue video so that again this series will begin with a good idea of how it ends off. So that's it for now and I'll see you in another tutorial. Till then, happy modeling.